Good morning. Merry Christmas, everyone. We're here to celebrate Jesus, the Lord, the Lord of life, the Lord of glory, the King who has come into this world. And I just encourage you to open your heart wide to God this morning. Open up your heart, open up your hands, and let's give the Lord praise, high praise. Oh, thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Lord, thank you for your great love and your mercy. Lord, thank you for teaching us about what love is. You are good, oh God. Jesus, we love you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. song is O Come All Ye Faithful, number 28 in the Canticle. Oh, you 
Christ the King. We adore you, we worship you. We join the angels and saints who worship you. Oh, alleluia, Christ is born, Christ is born. You are with us, oh Lord, our Savior. Hallelujah. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And with your spirit. Praise God. Merry Christmas to all of you. Christ is born in our midst. He is here. He is Emmanuel with us, God with us. And the Lord wants to pour out many graces and blessings upon us as we come rejoicing in his goodness and his love. We pause at the beginning of this liturgy, always acknowledging the reason for God's coming among us. And that is that he came to cleanse us, to free us, and to reconcile us to the Father. So let us cooperate with that grace, that extravagant gift, as we pause and silence our hearts, quiet our hearts before the great King. You came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. You will come at the end of time in glory and majesty with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to you, oh God most high. Glory, glory and praise to you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord. Yes, Lord, glory, hallelujah. So Marangelo Sorenente With all the angels we praise you With all the saints in glory we worship you We join the chorus Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia Glory, glory to you Lord Alleluia, thank you Lord Let us pray. O oh God, who wonderfully created the dignity of human nature and still more wonderf wonderfully restored it, grant, we pray, that we may share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings, announcing peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation, and saying to Sion, your God is king. Hark, your sentinels raise a cry together, they shout for joy. For they see directly before their eyes the Lord restoring Sion. Break out together in song, O ruins of Jerusalem. For the Lord comforts his people. He redeems Jerusalem. The Lord has barred, has bared his only arm in the sight of all nations. All the ends of the earth will behold the salvation of our God. the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving power of God. song for he has done wondrous deeds his right hand has won victory for him his holy arm salvation known in the sight of the nations he has revealed his justice 
He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. to the Lord, all you lands, break into song, sing praise. All the ends of the earth have seen the saving With the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. A letter from a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, in times past, God spoke in partial and various ways to our ancestors through the prophets. In these last days, He has spoken to us through the Son, whom He had made heir of all things, and through whom He created the universe, who is the refulgence of His glory the very imprint of his being, and who sustains all things by his mighty word. When he has accomplished purification from sins, he took his seat at the right hand of the majesty on high, as far superior to the angels, as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my sons, this day I have begotten you. Or again, I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. And again, when he leads the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God worship him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came to be through him. And without him, nothing came to be. What came to be through him was life. And the life was the light of the human race. The light shines in the darkness. The darkness has not, be, has not overcome it. A man named John was sent from God. He came for testimony to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He was not the light. But he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlivens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came to be through him. But the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not accept him. But to those who did accept him, he gave the power to become the children of God. To those who believe in his name, who we are born not by natural generation, nor by human choice, nor by man's decision, but of God. And the world became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We saw his glory. The glory of the Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. John testified to him and cried out, saying, This was he of whom I said, The one who is coming after me ranks ahead of me, because he existed before me. From his fullness, we've all received. Grace in place of grace. Because while the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. The only Son, God, who is at the Father's side, has revealed Him. The Gospel. Of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on you. Come, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. 
Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on us, anointing fall on us. Amen. Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way. You will have your way in this liturgy because it is established. But have your way in us. For that is your desire. That is the Father's desire that you might have your way in us. Come, Holy Spirit. Help us in our weakness to surrender all to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, brothers and sisters, again, a merry, blessed Christmas to each and every one of you. It is good and a blessing to have my brother priest here. Father Lewis, welcome back from your, your little venture. <laughs> Most of us like going to the Bahamas or something like that for vacation, but he, he takes vacations in the ER. <laughs> but that's not exactly, but we're glad you're back home. Praise God. And Father Anthony and Father Stephen, Blessings, thank you. Thank you for being here. Blessed be God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. So, brothers and sisters, the scriptures today, the gospel reading today, gives a, another perspective on the reality of Christmas than the previous days. How many of you attended Mass last night? Okay, so just a couple of you. So just to fill you in a little bit, there are four liturgies for Christmas. There's the vigil, there's the midnight mass, there's the mass in the early morning, and then there's the mass during the day, that's today. Each of them have separate readings. And the others are Matthew and Luke. We heard from the Gospel of John. And the differences, there are many differences, but the one I want to just highlight is that the Gospels of Matthew and Luke speak about when God is born among us. He is made visible to us. He's, he is born among of Mary. That's the focus. But the Gospel today, the Gospel of John, gives us a whole other picture. And that is when, when Jesus, or rather when the Word was eternally born unto the Father. Eternally. There was never a moment when he wasn't the Son. There was a moment when he wasn't Jesus, as in the Word made flesh, to take on our flesh, but there was never a moment ever, 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 when it, there wasn't the Father and the Son and in fact the Holy Spirit who is the the love, the glue, the beautiful manifestation of that love between the Father and the Son is the Holy Spirit. And so what we're reading about today is how that eternal word that existed forever and ever and ever and ever in the presence of the Father, through whom, through whom all creation came to be, even though he remained hidden, the manifestation of creation came forth from him. The word spoke. Remember, in creation, God spoke. Creation came to be in the story of Genesis. And so it is that word in the Jewish understanding is eternal. And so it is we recognize that the word of God is eternal, the second person of the Trinity. And that's who took our nature. Now, that is something to, even though it's like mind-boggling, we can't kind of comprehend it, it's very important for us to pause and say, oh my God, oh my God, you became flesh for me. That you who existed before the, before the Father, with the Father and the Holy Spirit for all eternity, you took on in the womb of Mary, through our blessed mother, you took our nature and made it your own. 
Why did you do such a crazy thing? It's called love. That's why. It's a crazy love that God has for us. He knew how desperate things were, and he knew that we were lost. We were lost in darkness, lost in our sins, without hope, without ever finding our way back to the Father, without ever fulfilling the purpose for which he made us. It was completely impossible, like a drowning person in the middle of the ocean, far from any possibility of swimming to, to some safety. And it was there that God met us. He met us as the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word of God, the eternally begotten Son of the Father. We will say that in the creed. In fact, we will not only what we bow our heads normally when we say that part, but we will actually kneel during that part. I'll try to remember to bring the mic down because you don't hear anything when I, if I kneel down and there's no mic in front of me. But we kneel during that time. And for that, for that one line or two lines it is. Why? Because we're like, really, oh my God. I don't understand that kind of love. I don't have that kind of love. Now we see little signs of that kind of love sometimes when we see someone who's willing to sacrifice their life for another, a friend, a son or daughter, a, a beloved, a spouse, or whomever that there's a kinship with, and they, the light, when someone's life is given in protecting another for the sake of another. But Jesus, the Father sent his son Jesus, the eternal word, when we were not his friends, we were not his kin. We were definitely not his family. We were his enemies because of our sins. And God so loved the world that at that time where we were most desperate, most undeserving, that's when he came to save us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is such good news. We can never lose sight of that, brothers and sisters. This is the reason for our hope. This is why no matter what kind of mess there is out there or in here, God is able, ready, willing. We have only to say yes, like Mary did. Let it be done unto me. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I surrender. Because when we do that, the floodgates open. We only barely, 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 barely glimpse the reality of the gift that is given to us. Barely. Oh, my goodness. It's kind of like receiving a, a treasure chest of wealth. And, <clears throat> and we, this is what we tend to do. But the, the treasure chest is wrapped in golden tinsel. And so we, we get so caught up in the, 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 the wrapping, we forget there's a treasure inside that's for you and me. It's a treasure from my Heavenly Father, the treasure of someone, of himself, through his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Because when the Father sends his Son, he is sending himself, he is sending his love. Because where the Father goes, the, where the Son goes, the Father is there and the Holy Spirit. That even though they are three persons, what one is, the other is present, the other is active. There's, why? Because they're in, they're in perfect communion. Unlike us, we're like, you know, we can be more divided than united sometimes. And, and God, God says, I know I know the mess, but it's into that mess that I've entered to redeem you. For what purpose? To cleanse us of our sins? Absolutely. But not just that. Not just that. As great as that would be. To atone for our sins. That would be so great. But it's not even just that. It's to reconcile us to the Father. 
to be reconciled with the Father so that we might know the joy of being part of this family. God became man so that man might become God. Now, wait, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait, 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 wait. Time out. When you looked in the mirror this morning, <laughs> did you say, hello, God? No, of course not. <laughs> you may have said like I did, oh, I was up too late the last four nights. <laughs> but glory to God, it's Christmas. Hallelujah. As I overcame my initial, uh, <laughs> when that alarm went off, I knew I wasn't God. Obviously so, but the reality of what God gives to us in his son, our Lord Jesus Christ, is greater than what my limited experience can tell me. My limited experience only gives me, every once in a while, somehow, in the midst of my sins, in the midst of my distractions, in the midst of whatever that stuff I get these little glimpses. I'm like, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, wow. And, and the Lord wants us to have that in this very Mass. Because the, the, the possibilities of a new wow, not just in the emotions, but in the core of our being, like, oh my God, wow. I'm starting to get it. You actually love me when I don't even love myself. Oh my God. I need to know that love. <laughs> I need to know that love. I need to live in that love. I need to, Lord, do it in me. Do it in me. Let it be done unto me, Lord. As you have said, as you have said, do it in me. Yes, Lord, I surrender. And, and Lord, <clears throat> let what you do in me be manifest through me. Because I sure can't do that because <clears throat> this is what happens by na nature. In church, St. Antoninus, glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. I walk out the door as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be. Nothing changed, Right? Our nature, that is our nature to be in that manner. But God gives us super nature. It's a supernatural reality, which we consent to, which we say, yes, Lord. <clears throat> yes, Lord, do it in me. And yeah, of course, I know the things that need to happen. We need to make this change or that or, or adjustment or make a discipline of prayer. And, 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 and we need to go to each other. <laughs> Lots. I grew up in family, so I know. Um, with, with six brothers and sisters around, there's a lot of times we have to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, there's a lot of those. And even more, I forgive you. Even if it wasn't always expressed, it had to be said in the heart. And we have to do that a lot. It's true, that's the way it's manifest. But see, <clears throat> when we let the love and the mercy and the, and the, and the greatness of God's faithfulness touch us, it actually becomes easier to be reconciled with one another. As we let the, the reconciliation that the Father has initiated, has done everything to facilitate, <clears throat> as we let that reality come and pierce our hearts, it's easier. In fact, it's not possible otherwise. It becomes possible. The impossible becomes possible because with God, for man, it's not possible. <laughs> but for God, all things are possible. Alleluia. And that's the good news. So, so brothers and sisters, the Lord wants to open us up to the, a, new, a new realm of what God's, what's possible with God. He doesn't want us to have just like nice music and singing. Thank you for the music for for jumping in music ministry. God bless you. Thank you. Little footnote, we don't have a regular music ministry here, although some, because Ken is, is not, he's been under the weather, and, um, and Riza is in the Philippines, 
and Lyndon is also under the weather. <laughs> so I'm like, oh my goodness gracious. So, but God is merciful. He's given us. Thank you, Mark, for coming back and all of those who jumped in. God bless you. So, <clears throat> but he, he wants to get, yes, he wants to give us an experience of the joy, like the singing and the, and the beauty of, of the church and, and all those things. They're right. It's fitting that we celebrate in a manner that, that in some little way befits the, 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 the greatness of the mystery of the incarnation. The God became flesh. God became flesh. Why? Not because he had nothing else to do, but because we were desperate and he made us for himself. And the time, God's time was right in that moment, preparing for hundreds of years, 2,000 years ago, even more than hundreds of years, thousands, preparing for that moment when the word become flesh and dwell among us. And now, 2,000 plus years later, God says, once again, the time is right. The time is right. This is the time where I want to pour out my blessing. Don't miss it. Many missed it when Jesus was born of Mary. Many missed it. In fact, even some, as we'll hear later on in the scriptures next week with the Holy Family, that some wanted to kill him. They just rejected him. But we want to be among those who come like this morning's would it be the shepherds coming. We want to be like among the angels who sing glory to God in the highest. We want to be among those who enter in and not watch from the sidelines so that as we enter in, God is free. He's free to enter in. As we worship God, which he doesn't need, he doesn't need any of this. He doesn't need one tiny little bit of this. Does he enjoy and delight in our offering? Oh, absolutely. He's a father. He's our savior, our Lord. Yes, of course he delights in our offering. He loves to receive this. Why? It doesn't do anything for him. But what it does is it opens our hearts, our praise and our worship of God that he delights in, if we come from a pure heart, repentant as we begin Mass, always doing that, he is able to pour in his grace into that worship. That literally, just like the Word became flesh in the womb of Mary, so the Word becomes flesh inside of us through that praise and worship. He becomes flesh through the reception of his Word. Remember, Mary received the word made flesh inside of her. So we are given the word of God in the scriptures. And then the word made flesh on the altar. We receive him. And we receive him worthily. He takes up domicile, residence. He makes, he pitches his tent among us. He, he says, I am here to stay. I'm here to stay. I'm not going anywhere. Don't chase me away, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm going to hear, I'm here to stay with you so that I might be with you all the way to glory. Praise God. <clears throat> I want to read with you just something from the office of readings today, because sometimes it's really good to hear. And I'm going to close with this. It's good to read what the saints wrote. God will help me to find it. Let's see. Okay. It's a sermon by St. Leo the Great Pope. Dearly beloved, today our Savior is born. Let us rejoice. Sadness should have no place on the birthday of life. The fear of death has been swallowed up. Life brings us joy with the promise of eternal happiness. No one is shut out from this joy. All share the same reason for rejoicing. Our Lord, victor over sin and death, finding no man free from sin, came to free us all. 
let the saint rejoice as he sees the palm of victory at hand. Let the sinner be glad as he receives the offer of forgiveness. Let the pagan take courage as he is summoned to life. In the fullness of time, chosen in the unfathomable depths of God's wisdom, the Son of God took for himself our common humanity in order to reconcile it with its creator. He came to overthrow the devil, the origin of death, in that very nature by which he had overthrown mankind. And so, at the birth of our Lord, the angels sing in joy, glory to God in the highest, and they proclaim peace to his people on earth as they see the heavenly Jerusalem being built from all the nations of the world. When the angels on high are so exultant at this marvelous work of God's goodness, what joy should it not bring to the lowly hearts of men? Beloved, let us give thanks to God the Father through his Son in the Holy Spirit, because in his great love for us, he took pity on us. And when we were dead in our sins, he brought us to life with Christ so that in him we might be a new creation. Let us throw off the old, our old nature and all its ways. And as we have come to birth in Christ, let us renounce the works of the flesh. Christian, remember your dignity. And now that you share in God's own nature, do not return by sin to your former base condition. Bear in mind who is your head, head of whose body you are a member. Do not forget that you have been rescued from the power of darkness and brought into the light of God's kingdom. Through the sacrament of baptism, you have become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Do not drive away so great a guest by evil conduct and become again a slave to the devil, for your liberty was bought by the blood of Christ. Amen. Please stand. And together, and again, we will kneel at the, at the lines, two lines, by the Holy Spirit. You'll see me, and you can just follow. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It is a privilege to intercede with Jesus before the throne of the Father. Let us bring these petitions with him to the Father now. We pray for the Holy Father, bishops, priests, and all the church leaders, that their lives, teaching, preaching, and pastoral care will proclaim the uncompromising truth of redemption in Jesus, who has, who has came to the world to reconcile us to the Father. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. For our country and those who lead it, that true freedom and justice may reign, for lasting peace throughout the world, that the coming of the Prince of Peace will bring an end to the evils of terrorism, war, and every one of man's inhumanities to man. Let us pray to the Lord. For the renewal of family life, that the love of Mary and Joseph will rekindle love in all families. Let us pray to the Lord. As we celebrate the birth of Christ, we pray for the unborn and their mothers, especially those experiencing a crisis pregnancy, that every such expectant mother might have someone whose support will help them to choose life. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray that in the midst of the modern secularization of Christ Christmas, we may not forget the real gift of his holy of this holy season but rather that we may be that it may be a sign of its true meaning to the fallen world let us pray to the lord, lord hear we pray for all who at this time are living in poverty for whom this time of year brings anxiety rather than happiness that they may benefit from the generosity of others and that the peace of Christ may be with them and their families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Let us pray for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, that they may experience the healing touch of our risen Lord. We specially pray for Cecil Joseph, Magdean Joseph, Brendan Igwe, Chimenzi Igwe, Teresa Disla, Rosemary Joseph, Marie Joseph, Marie Jo Anatos, and all the sick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our May the victory of Christ over sin, death, bring hope, eternal life to those who have died, and consolation to those who mourn. We especially pray for Sandy Condron, Lillian Iminyenu, Anyangu, Agamon Hill, Brian Uba, Augustine Ungubuya, Dorothy Joseph Okafor, Antonia Lechi Mbagu, Richard Carey, Patience Enwu, Charity of Paragu, Glenda Joseph, and all of our deceased loved ones. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For the intentions we hold in our hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please hear the prayers we offer you, for we come confidently in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ the Lord, the Word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please join in singing our offertory song, What Child Is This? It's number 35 in the canticle, 3-5. What 
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Make acceptable, O Lord, our oblation on this solemn day when you manifested the reconciliation that makes us whole, holy, pleasing in your sight and inaugurated for us the fullness of divine worship through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god for in the mystery of the word made flesh a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our minds so that as we recognize in him god made visible we may be caught up through him in the love of things invisible. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves, and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, 
the mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sisters, Colenus, Cyprian, Lawrence, Christogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien. And all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect, Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. And with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, Command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, 
in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son and may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us, also your servants who those sinners. Hope your abundant mercies graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barabbas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we visit you in their campaign, not wearing our merits, but granting us your pardon to Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching in song let us pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil deliver us lord we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And even now, we see his glory. For behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
communion song is Silent Night, found in the canticle number 32.
Yes, Mary, you, you did know. Oh, I'm sure that didn't know the full extent. But blessed mother, you knew that your son wasn't just yours. Truly, as the angel said, will be called son of the most high. <laughs> yes, Mary, you did know. Help us to know, blessed mother. As we have received the Eucharist, blessed mother, we receive Jesus. Help us to know, to see. be transformed. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Let us pray. Grant, O merciful God, that just as the Savior of the world born this day is the author of divine generation for us, so he may be the giver even of immortality, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Is anyone here for the first time? I'd like to welcome you. Anyone here for the first time? Blessed be God. Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. No, may you be welcomed by the Lord as if it were your first time. Amen. And a special thank you to uh, Music Ministry and to our children who sang and helped us sing God's praise. <laughs> praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Next Sunday is the Feast of the Holy Family, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. There will be the usual 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. Masses for Sunday. And then Sunday night begins the great solemnity of Mary, the Mother of God, as we also bring in the new year. Thus, Sunday, December 31st, New Year's Eve, we start at 8 p.m. with Eucharistic adoration, praise and worship, confessions available. And then Mass at 10 p.m., followed by potluck, food, and fellowship in the rectory dining room. Bring something to eat and share. The church will provide beverages and desserts. You're welcome to also, if you have a favorite dessert, to bring that as well. Monday, January 1st, is New Year's Day. Mass is at 10 a.m., as today. There is no 8 a.m. Mass on New Year's Day. Pick up flyers at the entrance to go or go to our website for all the scheduling details. In preparation for the great feast of Mary, Mother of God, New Year's Eve and Day, on December 23rd, we began a beautiful Surrender Novena written by the stigmatist Father Dolindo wrote Tuo, Tuolo, Mary's Magnificat prayer is integrated into this novena. One day, day one was Saturday, but it is not too late to catch up. And it's a nice short prayer, so I recommend it highly. A simple surrender to God. Please pick up the novenas at the church entrance or download it from the newsletter that you receive by email or text if you are on our mailing list. Speaking of mailing list, 
Um, there is a Christmas card for each family. If you did not, if you don't have one addressed to you, we want to know that because that means something's missing in our information. And so just fill out one of those uh, information cards and, uh, and also take one of the, the uh, Christmas cards. Give the information card to me and, and take the Christmas card. Just a little note inside greeting you on Christmas Day. Praise God. It is helpful, by the way, to have that information for us to communicate with you. So please do that. Thank you, Jesus. And again, thank you to all who did many things to prepare for this day. Eileen and crew for decorating beautiful, beautiful decorations. Caribbean community who brought the, the um, uh, poinsettia. Music ministry, electronics, communications, Teresa, in um, getting all the word out to everybody. And all those who work behind the scenes, thank you very much. God bless you. I want to take a moment to address something with you that I'm doing in the last two masses that we had. And that is, um, in society, um, there are often different waves of miscommunications about the church and about Jesus Christ and about um, church's teaching, and uh, whether it's about the Lord or about wh how we're to live. And there most recently has been in terms of that. So I want to give you something to work with so that you can have peace from clarity. Sometimes when there's information coming from the Vatican, and these days, sometimes it's like, uh, you need to be more clear. It didn't get quite communicated in the way I would have hoped, but whatever. So there's a recent one in that situation, and it was a statement that was titled something like, I forgot the exact title, but something like, um, blessing of same-sex unions. And, um, and so I want to clarify and state what was stated in that declaration, restate it for our own benefit, because sometimes when it gets to the press, it ends up something else. Maybe you've heard. The church now welcomes and recognizes and will bless uh, homosexual marriages, same-sex unions, and, um, and that's absolutely false. That's absolutely not what that document says, and it's not what the church teaches. It's not what Jesus teaches, and that's the most important reality. So, um, but because the, because the, the devil is kind of involved in this whole conversation trying to manipulate and twist, there's that, the, it goes from what's presented to what's initially to what's come across to the public. And that's, thank, you can thank not just the media, but the, the enemy of our salvation. However, however, having said that, I recognize and acknowledge that there are elements not only in the world, but sometimes influencing the church, members of the church, who kind of can sow seeds of confusion that do not help in that situation. And I just want to acknowledge that, that... Um, Jesus chose 12 apostles. One of them was Judas. And that reality is part of we experience, what, part of what we experience that kind of creates that, that, um, that situation. That wasn't an accident. Jesus knew Judas. He loved Judas, but Ju Jesus, but Judas abandoned him and, and, um, and suffer the, the consequences of that. The Lord does permit evil for the sake of stirring us, waking us up. Because the sad reality is we tend to be mediocre. We tend to be kind of lukewarm. And we tend not to be on fire for that which we should be on fire. And we're all on fire about things that God says, I don't care about that. You care about that, but that's not my priority. And so the Lord sometimes allows evil to kind of disturb us, even throwing in garbage that's really not from him at all. Obviously, the evil one doesn't produce anything from the Lord, but God permits that to purify us. So I want to give you a clarification 
about what is permissible and what is not permissible. You know that sometimes when people come to church here, we always say, anyone here for the first time? And we pray a blessing upon them. The priest prays the blessing upon them. Does that mean that they're blessing everything of their life, everything of their, their situations? Absolutely not. The person may be in really a, a dark, you know, sin, maybe in, in uh, adulterous relationships. And, and what we're praying for the Lord to bring about his will in their lives and to give them strength to choose the will of God. That's the purpose of that blessing, to assist people in choosing to do the will of God, not just to give in to their flesh. Now, my regret is that that document did not say that as clearly as Father Joseph would have liked. <laughs> I would have liked it a little more clearly said, but nonetheless, it did not say the church can have now blessings of same-sex unions. No, did not say that. Clearly did not say that. In fact, it said it's impossible. That cannot be done because you cannot bless sin. You cannot bless sin. And so, but what there is something that I want to bring out to you that as believers that we want to do. We want to have a different mind that we tend to have. And that is this. I want to tell you a little story, and I want, I want to illustrate what I'd like to say on this. So when I was probably, I don't know, 12, 13 years old, I'm one of, um, I'm number five of eight. Number seven went home to the Lord. But the two older ones, my two older brothers, and particularly my oldest brother, was a kind of tough guy in the neighborhood. Um, so I looked up to him. When I was like 12, 13 years old, uh, in general, I was the kid who, like, was a late bloomer. You know, like, when I was in college, you know, the kids in college had the full beards and, and were shaving every day. I was lucky if I had to shave once a week. <laughs> you know, it's just the reality of the different nature of how God's people are different. You know, God doesn't make anybody the same. And so... But as a young kid, it's kind of awkward, you know? And so it is, that's an awkward time for a young person. That transition, oh, but that word that the world wants to manipulate, but that, 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 that point of moving from childhood to adulthood is kind of like a messy time. It's a difficult time. It's... It's a time of a lot of questioning and, and the foundations of things get shaken and it gets a little confusing and, and it's a hard time for young people. And of course, sometimes in that struggle, in that insecurity, they tend to be kind of, rah, 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 you know, biting at people. Uh, have you noticed that? That that's young teenagers tend to have a little bit more tendency to be kind of like um, a little bit more negative when it comes to dealing with adults. Maybe not so much with their peers, but with adults, because they're trying to find their own, trying to figure out where they are, who they are. And in that, they're vulnerable to the enemy deceiving. They're vulnerable because there's a kind of instability there that's just part of that growing from childhood to adulthood. And so, and part of that is the reality of their masculinity as a young man or femininity as a young woman. And so what happens is happening right now in our time. It's not that it ever, never happened before. It happened from the beginning. But it is continuing happening more visibly here is that in our time is that the enemy is capitalizing on that difficult time for young people and getting a bullseye on them and messing with their heads. So what happened with me? Um, young kid feeling like, man, when am I going to go from this childhood stuff to this adult stuff? I still have this queaky voice. When am I going to get, you know, when am I going to move into, you know, being more of a man? I'm 12 years old, so whatever, 13 years old. My, my oldest brother said to me, the tough guy said to me, by the way, Joseph, if you ever doubt your masculinity, don't worry about it. When I was your age, 
It was kind of weird, awkward time. And, you know, this will pass. Don't worry about it. Now, that little thing that he said to me was gold. Because it's such an awkward time. You need someone who you look up to to assure you, pat you on the back, and say, don't worry about it. This too will pass. It's going to pass. Don't worry. You are, as in a young boy, you are a man. And a woman, you are a woman, beautifully, perfectly, and fearfully, and wonderfully made. And so that was a great gift that he gave to me, that God gave to me through him, even though he didn't have a clue. He had no idea. Now, I say this to you because grace builds on nature, and so the enemies also capitalize on brokenness of nature. So what's happening in our society is there's, a, there's a, a lack of fathers, and so that makes it very vulnerable for children growing up, male and female, to be able to develop into their manhood or womanhood, as, a, as in the case of a woman. And, and they, they desperately need, and this is totally normal, they desperately need adults around them who love them, who recognize the gift of who they are as young women and young men or young men and, um, and be able to affirm that and, and to do those, to say those little things that are just encouraging, you know, in, that, in, their, in their early developments. You know, it's fragile. You think they're all tough because they fight with you. They're not. They need your affirmation, your encouragement. They need that. They need to be told, and rightly so. The rightly so, to, to the, the young men to, to, to be affirmed in that masculinity, to give them the, 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 the jobs that are more men, more masculine in nature. Now, everybody's not going to be different. They're not going to be all men are going to be so. It, it's not, the goal isn't macho. The goal is just affirm that truth of how God made them, period. Not to try and reinvent it because it's awkward time. Excuse me. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. And the word was made flesh. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please sit down. Thank you. Um, so... Um, so the enemy wants to capitalize, but we want to be smart, and we want to recognize what's going on and try to affirm gently, honestly, not, not making up silliness, not plasticky, you know, saying, you know, she, she, you know sil things that are, that are not from the heart. We want to pray to the Lord, Holy Spirit, sh show me how you, you, want to affirm the masculinity and the femininity, masculinity or femininity for a girl of this, someone who you've brought into my life, my son, my daughter, my nephew, my niece, my neighbor, whoever it is. And, um, and so we are not helpless victims in this situation. The devil wants us to be thinking we're helpless victims, all this crazy agenda of the world, and it is, this big agenda, there's no doubt about it, it's obvious, but, but we don't wanna be, we don't wanna be do one of two things. 
we want to say, ah, oh, I can't do anything. You don't want to do that. That's a lie. Nor do we want to be like obnoxiously rude and saying these so-and-so people are doing so-and-so. So they're just broken people that Jesus gave his life on the cross for. That the reason why he died, he gave, he, he became flesh. They're the reason. And sometimes, even though the way the Pope does it sometimes makes me like, Rrr. he's trying to wake us up to the reality that Jesus gave his life for them. And not that they just may stay same old, same old, but that we might be able to be part of God's ministry to others in mercy. Not in confusion, not in making believe, oh, it doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. And No, that's stupidity. We're not like that. We recognize this truth, this truth and this freedom in the truth. <laughs> um, and, and that's freedom. That's freedom of the Lord, freedom in the Lord. So I um, lost my train of thought for a second here, one second. Okay, thank you, Lord. Nope, not yet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Please, Jesus. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so... We want to be clear, there's no such thing as blessing a same-sex union. Not, not in reality. Even if people say the words, it's not reality. You can't bless sin. It's impossible. But what God does is he wants to, he wants to be, us to be able to be instruments to meet people where they are. And even if we say, look, I don't understand it. I don't know where you're coming from, but I know Jesus loves you. And let me be an instrument. And then really pray for the grace to be an instrument of his love. Or maybe we'll say, maybe we'll say, you know what? I understand where you're coming from. Because there was a time in my life where I was confused. And the enemy messed with my head. And I want to tell you, there's an afterward that's real and it's freedom and it's grace and it's beautiful. And I know people in that situation, and, and it's a great thing to see their, hear their witness and to, their ministry is great. But each of us have a part to play in this. We're not just helpless victims. And, and God wants us to be empowered by the Holy Spirit so that we go forth not like hiding under a rock outside, but rather that we be standing for, firm and strong in the Lord, especially young people, because you're surrounded. I mean, the young people have been so indoctrinated. They've been so indoctrinated. They've been told, listen, um, if you don't accept homosexuality the way I want to be giving it to you as I force it down your throat, then you are bigoted, you are evil, and it's the same thing as being racially prejudiced because of the color of your skin. Well, that is the biggest baloney. <laughs> That's just false. But our young people have been fed that lie. And so we can't react with like, we have to be gracious in it. Even though that is a lie, <laughs> and we need to be clear on it, we need to be merciful and, and gentle in the manner we communicate because young people, their very nature is, and you know this, and I heard this and said it, their words out of their mouth very early on is, that's not fair. Because they have a sense of fairness that's based on a, a certain understanding. You know, if one child gets something and the other one doesn't get it, that's not fair. You know, and they're big on that. But so this is a kind of, there's something inside of young people that we don't want to squelch. We want to honor that. And it's this sense of integrity. That they want to have integrity. They don't want to have like say one thing and do something else. They're like, there's something inside of them says, no, I don't want that. And so we don't want to encourage that kind of understanding. We want to encourage um, a sense of God has a purpose and a plan. 
He didn't make any mistakes. Yes, we experience brokenness. And yes, it's messy. It's messy. But Jesus is Lord. He's seated on the throne. And I'm not going to run away from you, condemn you. I'm going to walk with you and, and, and try to be a blessing to you, to help you to see the Lordship of Jesus Christ in your life. So I'm going to stop talking because I'm going to babble all, all day long, and you don't need that. <laughs> so praise God. Um, one more announcement. Often we have refreshment after Mass, especially on Christmas. It would have been very nice. But truthfully, the staff was just so wiped out in doing so many different things, and nobody else volunteered that we didn't, we're not going to have anything after Mass because we just didn't have the means to do it. Um, and so, uh, but that is, a, that is an invitation to step up. That is an invitation to you to say, I don't want that to happen again, Father Joseph. We want to we wanna help. I will help you do this or that or the other. And sh sign me up. Sign me up. I'm ready to help, at least sometimes. Amen. Praise God. Merry Christmas to all of you. God bless you. Bow down for the Lord's blessing. May Almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of the only begotten Son and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent and enrich you. I got the wrong one. <laughs> may, may enrich you with his blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by that glorious birth has illuminated this holy day. Drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Oh my goodness. May he illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. And may God who willed that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. And may God, who by the incarnation brought together the earthly and heavenly realm, fill you with the gifts of his peace and favor and make you sharers in the church, with the church in heaven. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth to be a blessing. The Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus, immaculate heart of Mary, St. Joseph. Amen. Please join and sing our recessional song, Joy to the World, number 26 in the canticle, 2-6.
Peace. 